What is up beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We're in the shop again today and today we are going to get a gas tank mounted on the shovel head as well as I have a subscriber stopping by to drop a bike off. I'm going to do some work on a bike for him. Uh, he's got some kind of electrical issue that I'm going to solve. So I want to get this done before he gets here and uh, I'll probably shoot some video working on that bike. I don't know if that's going to be in this video or not. But um, overall, everything's been awesome this week. I've spent a lot of time in the woods. It's the rut. Uh, somebody got all pissy in my last video because uh, there was a clip of me carrying my dead deer. And uh, yeah, they, they left a little pissy comment and like, I'm out of here. You're showing your murdered animal, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I'm sorry if you don't... Uh, like the content but this is my channel and I share my life and I provide for my family there is no food without death so like all you vegans and vegetarians and even just people who eat meat who think because you don't directly kill an animal that you're not responsible for a death guess what you are like even a salad if you've ever gone through a field after a combine's gone through there are dead deer there are dead rabbits there's all kinds of dead animals so, like, there is no food without death, and uh, I think it's a big problem that most people are so disconnected from what they eat that they don't understand that. So, I will never apologize for being who I am, and if you don't like it, you don't have to be here. I just, I wanted to address that. I normally, like, when people leave shitty comments, I just ignore it, but I don't know. For some reason, that one, it was just like, you know what, get the fuck out of here. I, I don't want you here. So, <laughs> and I try not to cuss on the channel much, but there's no better way to say that. So, enough of going on about that. Let's get into this, show you where we're at. So, if you missed the last video, we shaved all the castings and welds off the backbone. Depending on the lighting, it made it look like the tube is out of round. The tube is not out of round. It's just, uh, the pattern for me going over this with the wizard wheel, depending on how the light hits it, like right here, this looks flat, this is not flat, it's round. Um, I would say, just looking through the camera, I can see like stuff that looks like it's flat, but it's not. So, we have our tank right here. This is a 3.3 gallon Mustang tank from Lowbrow. The tank is gonna sit roughly like that. I went ahead already and pre-drilled holes in the uh, tabs and what I'm gonna do is get this tank centered where I'm happy tape it on and then center punch those holes so I can go back through drill them and then, and then weld in bungs okay so I taped on down here put a level on there got that relatively leveled now we're just gonna take a center punch And with that center punched, now I can take this off. We're going to install that bung first. And then we will set the hind one off of that. I'll probably use some string to make sure everything's perfectly straight. So let me throw you guys on the tripod, and let's get into getting this first one installed. Okay, so we got the front bung installed. It's just tacked in place. But as you guys saw, I'm using my calipers. I measured the bung, and I'm trying to get the hole just super precise so there's not really any slop in there, and everything just mounts up really nice. So let me flip the camera around. See right here, front is mounted. And a lot of times I flat... I flatten the bungs, but I'm actually going to leave these slightly raised. So I've got uh, leather washers top and bottom. That way it's just not vibrating on the backbone. So I'm pretty happy with how the tank's sitting. Everything looks good and in line. So now I could center punch this.
So here's a little tip for you guys. Um, I'm using stainless steel bolts, and stainless steel bolts will work harden really fast on you. So even though I just tack welded that, I am going to walk away from this for 10 or 15 minutes and let that cool down. I've done it, I can't tell you how many times. You fire a tack into something and then go to put a stainless steel bolt in there, that thing will seize in there like you won't believe. There is no getting it out. I almost always end up having to totally drill the bung or whatever and going back through and put a helicoil or something in. So just walk away for 10 or 15 minutes, let that cool off before you go and fire a bolt in there. So that's what I'm going to do and I will be back with you guys in just a second. So as you guys can see, the tank is mounted now. This hole back here, uh, when I drilled it, I was a little off center. So as you saw in the video, what I did to get that back in center is I took the die grinder and I just moved the hole a little bit this way and that allowed the unibit to recenter and everything turned out just perfect. So now I'm going to take the tank off, finish weld the bungs, and then probably get my grips and throttle installed. I've not purchased a clutch lever yet, and I'm not going to have a front brake on this bike, so there's no front rank, uh, no front brake to be put on, and right now I don't have a clutch lever, but we can throw the grips on and the throttle assembly. So let's get this tank off and get into getting the finish welding done. I should probably pull the seat off for when I do that. I'm just going to run a thread chaser through here, just in case something got in the hole. Okay, that one's good and clean. And that one's good and clean. It's always a good practice, just like when you get parts back from powder coat, just Run a thread chaser through them, you will save yourself a lot of headaches. For a throttle, I've got the Biltwell Whiskey Throttle. This is what I use on everything I build. These plug us out of the end of the handlebars. There's lots of other good options for throttles out there. This is just the one I like. I like the look, and it just works. There are cheaper options. Use what you want. Then for the grips, I have Biltwell recoil grips. Again, same grip I use on every bike I build. Just, it's a known good. Another trick I use is compressed air. Slide it up under the grip and inflate it. See how easy that grip starts moving? There we go. That went on easy. go those are on you can also use the blowgun trick to get grips off if you need to pull a grip off and you want to reuse it you know I see a lot of guys who cut the grips off use a blowgun you can get them right off and that grip is still reusable so as you guys see we've got the handlebars all finished up the tank is mounted 
seat is done. Pretty much all we're waiting for is the engine to come back from the machine shop. And then uh, once I get the engine in there, I can weld on the tabs for the mid controls. And after that, I can, well, I don't even need the tins for that. I can send the tins off to paint. They are ready to go. I still have to cut the neck, the stem, but uh, I'll do that when this all goes out to paint and I have to tear it down anyways. I got the bolts for the handlebars cut down to size, so everything's good there now. Those are firmly mounted. So overall, the bike is pretty much almost there. Obviously, we still need to wire it, and I'm still going to cut these lower parts out. I'm sure this happens to everybody, but it happens to me a lot. I am just not looking forward to the task of cutting those out. So I've been doing everything in my power to avoid it. And uh, I just need to tackle it. I need to tackle it. And I'm sure once I do, it's not going to be as bad as my mind has made it out to be. But I've just really lacked any and all motivation to, to cut those out yet. But I, I really need to cut them out because... They kill the lines of this bike. Absolutely just murder the lines. So, maybe, maybe next video. Maybe. Alright guys, so John, the subscriber who's bringing a bike, he just left. Uh, let me show you his bike. I don't like putting people on camera, so uh, I didn't even pull the camera out while he was here. But he was really nice. He brought a friend with him. They were super great. So, let me flip this around. This right here is... John's Sportster. It's a very different Sportster. might be the first thing you stand out, but not in a bad way. So first you will see this big front tire and fender like nothing you've ever seen on a Sportster. And then you'll notice that is a wide glide front end. So <laughs> it's definitely different. I, I really dig it. It looks like a smaller Heritage Classic. So, he had a different seat on it. I threw the seat on it. Uh, told him he could have that. I had it sitting on the shelf. But, um, I'm going to be swapping out the handlebars, the riser bushings, and fixing a wiring issue. But right here, I think we found why they won't work. All the wires in the switches have been cut. So, that's definitely the issue there. So, he brought me some new handlebars and new switches for that side. We're going to go ahead and get all that fixed for him this week, but that will be a, another video. That's pretty much going to wrap this video up, guys. I love each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up, comment below, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and in the description box below, there's links to all my social media as well as our company website, hotheadstalls.com, where we make everything for horses as well as dog collars and dog leashes, and there's a 5% off discount code in that description box. I will see you all in the next one. I love you all. I'm out of here.